Hello, Pastor Aaron Soto here. Thank you for being a part of our service today. Today's a very special day. We are celebrating our 40th anniversary. In 1982, on January the 3rd, a group of people gathered together in the basement of Floyd and Joan Vandening's home. What they thought was going to just be a simple Bible study was actually the place where ATC was born. It was the moment that this great story church began. And we are so very grateful for that. We are going to be careful today to give all glory and honor to God who has given us salvation, but he also gave us a great man. Pastor Mike Schmaltz began the work here in the Fox Valley at the age of 23. By the way, Penny, I believe, was 18 years old and, and what an incredible couple they were. We honor his memory and I had the privilege to serve alongside him as a co-pastor for just a short amount of time. But I do want to say personally how grateful I am for his great and capable leadership. Mike Schmaltz was a man of uncompromising work ethic. He was a man who loved people and he was a man who loved this message. He had a vision for this church. And I believe where we are today is very complimentary to what he saw by faith. I wanna say thank you to Penny, Levi, Luke, and Brooke for being our first, first family. We appreciate all that you did. It's never easy to be the lead. And we are so very thankful for every sacrifice that you made so that we can celebrate here today. I also wanna honor all of our leaders, our foundational and first generation leaders, the first song leaders, Sunday school teachers, the first members who walked into a very humble situation and circumstance, but you were buoyed with faith and you were united in this great cause of advancing the kingdom of Jesus Christ in this Fox Valley area. And I'm so very thankful for the succession of leaders, the services, the preaching, and all the sacrifices that were made that have brought us to this great day. Our first order of business today is to take a look back at ATC's story. What happened, um, we went from Nina to Kokona because we lived in Kokona. So we're going to the Kokona church and that pastor went, wanted to go independent. And we had told him, if you go independent, uh, we will go back to the UPC church. We lost a church there. And after that, I asked Pastor Bridges, could we still have a church in this area? And two weeks later, he came back to me and he said, if you're willing to start a church in your basement, um, Michael Schmaltz is willing to be the pastor. And there were a lot of prayers from the Nina Church. People from the Nina Church were praying and um, uh, certainly without Pastor Bridges saying yes, you can start a church in our basement. None of us would be sitting here today if he would have said no. Well, that very first service was fantastic. Uh, uh, Pastor Schmaltz rented a piano. They brought it down our basement and he had a, a pulpit built and he brought that down the basement. I set up all the chairs that we had. They didn't match each other, but they accommodated the people that came. And um, we had um, a couple from the Nina Church um, that one played the piano and the other one led song service. We had, then we had preaching and we had coffee and cookies afterward. Um, we got to meet a lot of uh, friends and new people, and it was super. Uh, yes, he would look back at our humble beginnings, certainly, and how far that God had brought us. And um, I know he would give God all the glory and honor for it, and he would be in his middle 60s already 
and I know if he could do cartwheels, he would do one. <laughs> Well, much smaller, obviously, and uh, it was very intimate. We all knew each other very well. Songs were more simple. We had great altar calls, and they would last like for an hour. And people were really hungry, you know, and like they are now. It was really a really close-knit family, which I think happens in a lot of small churches. It, it was a lot of fun. It. Uh, we, like Barbara said, we was a family, and working for God, you know, always makes you feel good. Anytime you do something for God, it makes you feel good. And and when we'd see someone new come into church, we, we would always be very happy, you know, because we were building a church, and and uh, it was there's no feeling like it. It was a great time in our life. I think it would blow his mind <laughs> in good way. I think he'd be very happy. He'd be thrilled for the growth, for the way Pastor Soto has taken this church and just ran with it. And um, I see great things ahead for us. I think he would be very, very happy with the way things are right now. And um, yeah, I think he's looking down with a big smile on his face. He saw it full. He knew this was going to happen. I mean, this was it was God's will, God's plan for him to buy, buy this building, and uh, and he saw it full already, so I know he would be very happy. And then now to move on to Glory Lane, yeah, that was that's a big icing on the cake. <laughs> About a week ago, God directed me to Mark chapter 10. I want to talk to you about the first step to your miracle. Amen, the first step to your miracle. I want you to receive a miracle. I believe God's in the miracle working business. It's not hard for him, but let's pray together. Lord, I sense your holy presence in the house. You've already worked in our lives and touched us, helping us and strengthening us. I ask you to open our heart up to your word. Let the sweet anointing flow from heaven that we can receive the beautiful truths that come from your word. We ask it in Jesus' name. I believe that God is still in the miracle working business. I believe your situation is not going to catch God by surprise. And you're not going to drain heaven when your need is brought before the Lord. He does wonders. I would have to say that an ATC leader who had an impact on my life would be uh, brother and sister Turner. He's the reason that I even got into teaching Sunday school at all. I used to run from him, I used to hide from him, but he became persistent and was always asking me. And then when it opened up that the high school grade levels really needed a teacher, that was where I stepped in. And he was a very big encouragement to me and, and I really appreciated the liberties that he gave me with my classes. I think what Pastor Schmaltz would think of today's leadership team is I believe that he would be very proud. I believe that he would be very excited with where ATC is today and the growth that we've experienced and the changes that have been made. And, and I think he'd be so excited especially to see how the youth group and the hyphen has changed from what it was back then. We didn't have hyphen back then. and you know we lost a lot a lot of kids and to see them staying now is just an amazing awesome thing and i think he would be really excited about that a man of great detail he was a good friend of mine for 25 years i would known him and um, i'd run through a brick wall for him that was the type of man he was a leader pastor and uh, when i mentioned detail. He had fun in everything. He knew how to squeeze every minute out of every hour. And uh, just a perfectionist when it came to preaching, service, services, detail. Um, and that was all in the service for God. He wanted, he wanted to give his best to the church. 
And I always appreciated that in him and followed him and, and loved the man. He was a very strong leader, very bold. Um, I'll tell you what, he put the fear of God in you. <laughs> <laughs> when I got called to his office, I'm like, oh no, what did they do wrong now? Uh, he was a very good friend, the best friend anyone could have. Well, I remember Pastor Soto coming in in, in 2006 and, um, you know, helping out Pastor Schmaltz and he needed that, that help because our church was growing. We didn't know that uh, Pastor Schmaltz would not be with us a few years after that. And it was, it was an adjustment. Our number one endeavor is serving God. So um, Pastor Sora did a marvelous job in the transition and I'm sure it had to be tough for, for him uh, as it was for our congregation at that time. We backed Pastor Soto as we would back Pastor Schmaltz. He's the leader of God, the, the man of God. And our family followed right along and uh, we needed that structure. Uh, in the transition. So what I remember um, is that Bible studies were very important in the beginning. It was always uh, a very big commitment to Pastor Schmaltz to teach Bible studies and he's always encouraging Bible studies. I would have to say outreach was a very important thing and I believe still it is today. So for me, the, the impact that ATC had on my life and family has been huge. Um, I have multiple family members who attend ATC for many years and it gave me a place to come home to. So I know I started coming for the first time about 12 years old and um, the, the, I, it just gave me a, a place to return. It was a place to go home to. A um, couple of my favorite memories, our first one is um, I was going through a really difficult time and he was trying to console me and, and you know, make me feel better and he, um, he told me that, you know, God is truth and as long as you live in the truth and you tell the truth, um, everything is going to be okay. And I remember thinking, walking out of there, oh, I don't know if everything's going to be okay. And it was. It was okay. Another uh, more fun memory I have is playing volleyball. Uh, we, used to, we used to go to the park um, for the picnics after church, and we used to play volleyball from uh, when we got there until it got dark out and mm -hmm. if it was raining uh, one time it was there were snow flurries everybody was sitting out there with their mittens and hats on and we just kept playing volleyball and it was just a really good time. It's one of my favorite memories of Pastor Schmaltz there's so many. Um, hugs, um, he said the Christian life is the greatest life. Um, his just his preaching and golfing um, together picnics. Uh, one of the funniest memories that comes to mind for me is when I was younger I could be a little bit of an instigator once in a while and uh, so it so happened uh, I, I played a practical joke on one of the ladies at the church I don't want to say who it was and uh, she was kind of upset with me and uh, so I was the usher that uh, at the time I was head usher and I was standing at the back of the church and pastor was preaching or getting ready to song service and uh, all of a sudden he motioned me come up so I came up to the front and he's like I need to talk to you right after church and then that was it and he turned around and he started praising again so I slunk back to my usher spot and I'm like oh he knows so uh, after service I went to his office and I was like fifth in line and so I waited, and finally I got in there, and I just sat down, and he's like, hey, Frank, you know, and I said, Pastor, I know. I said, I, I messed up. I'm sorry. I did this. I shouldn't have done it. I went overboard. And he's like, what are you talking about? And I said, well, I played the practical joke, and he's like, oh, you're going to have to deal with her on that. I just want to let you know, Brother Kylie's going to be here this next week, and I want you to set up a tea time for us to go golfing. And so I ended up confessing to something to him that I might have got away with, but that was probably one of the 
best ones for me. What would Pastor Schmaltz think of Pastor Huffman and why? Um, he would love Pastor Huffman. Uh, one of the biggest things is family. He's like, he loved family and his children and spending time with them. That was such a big thing for him. The other thing he would love about Pastor Huffman is they uh, have a lot in common as far as he has a very way, a great way of having a soft answer and then sometimes making you think about it and come to the same conclusion as him. When I was having coffee with him once, he was explaining some stuff to me and his just his soft wisdom filled answers just helped me kind of feel like I was coming to the, to the conclusion myself when actually he was nudging me in that direction. Pastor Schmaltz did that a lot. Childhood impressions of ATC were that, um, a couple of things. Uh, that was my favorite place to be um, because that meant Sunday school and worship and um, just fun, like a lot of fun things associated with being at church and being at ATC. Um, it also meant friends, seeing my friends and family. And my childhood impressions of Pastor Schmelzer that he was I always just felt like he was, he was, he was big. He was larger than life. He was strong. He was tall. Um, and I don't know if that's because I was a child or if he just really was strong, <laughs> but he was just a like larger than life person. Um, and I always just felt there, a sense of strength when I was with him. And he was just always talking and using his hands to talk and just, just big and bold. and. And um, s strong is the word that kind of always comes to mind. Uh, I felt like he was very fatherly and kind. Um, I remember specifically him teaching me how to write my eights when he was helping me with my math homework one time um, and the right way to do it. And I just remember him being that kind of person, somebody willing to help you with anything. Um, so I already had my opinions formed of ATC by seventh grade. I'll share a sentence from an essay that I wrote. I've gone to church for all of my life and I will continue going for the rest of my life. I could never stop going because I love the Lord, all of the people, and my pastors, Pastor Schmaltz and Pastor Soto. I consider my church family as my real family, and I still do. I would say that ATC has impacted my life greatly. I attended nursery here, Sunday school, youth group, I Bible quizzed here, I was baptized here, I met my husband here, and my husband and I serve as the promotions directors here currently. And in talking to my grandparents, I did learn that back in the Little Shoot building, they served as the promotions and production leaders while we were transitioning from Little Shoot to the ATC building here in Appleton. And I think it's just really special that a church can have that kind of multi-generational longevity. It's hard to be a part of something from childhood into adulthood and not have it be your, a, a part of, not all of, but a part of your identity. I have coworkers and friends throughout the years that have always been searching for community and searching for a place to belong. And I've been blessed enough to have that my whole life. From the very beginning in the Little Shoot building to here at our current building in our current congregation, I've had friends, I've had mentors, I've had extended family, I've had people I can call on, I can rely on no matter what and that have seen me through every stage of life and every struggle. So I think just having something, a place to belong my whole life, is a, it's a unique thing. It's not something that everybody has and I'm honored and blessed to be a part of this church. Attending ITC has definitely impacted our family in a miraculous way for us all to be starting our walk into faith and continuing our walk into faith. Coming back. <laughs> and bringing our children up in a way that God wishes us to. With the help of ITC, anything can happen. It's the community for me, right? I'm gonna echo everything you said, but on top it's um, 
coming in and, and feeling like you belong somewhere, especially if you look different or you dress a little different or, you're, you know, not your Sunday's best. Or you have right? a different accent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, and obviously the family piece as well, our children um, and how they see us and the changes that they've been making um, like on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. It's just our life overall has been better. Absolutely. <laughs> A resounding thank you. Thank you for building this community, this yeah. this family that has been so welcoming to us. The acceptance um, yeah. has been, uh, you can't even explain it. I'm at a loss for words with that. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what I would say to them, just, you know, how grateful we are. And thanks to God that we're here.